welcome back. We got the front bumper going back on today. We got the front crash beam back on. It's literally just held in by some uh, bolts. You can see where I left the socket. There's some bolt there and two bolts there. We hooked up the wiper tank back as well as the two horns. And you guys can see now that my horn officially works. Oh, of course not because I unplugged the battery, but you guys will have to just trust me that the horns work. We already removed the driver's side BBS wheels, throw them in the back of the Civic. We got to reverse mount those back at home. And the Willwoods are actually officially sold. Front and rear kits sold it to my buddy Igor. Got to take them off so he can pick them up. And we're gonna throw on the OEM calipers, ordered new rotors from Rock Auto. So we should have this thing on the road by next weekend. ECU, we gotta flash the tune from Derek. He gave us the new tune for the new ID1050 injectors. Gotta get the steering wheel back from Will because we had it signed by Nakai from RWB. Front bumper is fully on. It took a lot of time because there's a lot of clips that were missing that I had to put back in the proper place. And then on the inside, we also had to do the fender liners. I want to take my time with everything because this is the first time I had the bumper off the car and I want to make sure that we're putting back more than what we took off. Obviously this car has been modified throughout its lifetime. So clips go missing, clips break, and then we have our handy, this is like a whole big thing of clips and uh, plastic pop rivets and all that. And we also have the whole box of nuts and bolts, all metric, 8.8 .8 grade. This stuff is a lifesaver because all these fasteners will replace basically everything on these Japanese cars. So really glad I bought this. It was like a hundred something bucks on Amazon. Prime and uh, we usually use all the M6 ones. Don't really use too much of the larger ones yet. Willwoods are off. Rotors are packed away. All four of them are in there. The box is like freaking 80 pounds. We're working on the rear ones as well. As you can see, everything is off. We just got to remove the parking brake and then take off the brake line and then these are free to go. Big shout out to my boy, Skyline guy, Andy, for getting these sandblasted for me. These were originally painted red, and this was the original black that was flaking off. We're going to do this one in black with some engine enamel over there. Got to do some primer on everything first. Give it a light sand. We're going to use some 400 over everything. Then we'll hit it with some primer. We got to tape off all the stuff that we don't want painted, like the hardware and the caps and all that. That way we do a nice job. Everything is going to be black, and uh, I think it's going to look good. We got the first layer of primer down. Going to let these dry. Lay down a few coats. So far, we're looking really good. The calipers look really, really good. This paint's a little interesting, the uh, Raptor enamel. But uh, we'll see how it looks once it's all dry and cured. But uh, I think it looks nice. So everything cures with heat. So we're going to have to install it on the car. And then once the brakes heat up and once the engine heats up, this will cure on its own. Got the main relay out of the car. It's super easy. It's a 10 millimeter bolt and then two plugs on the bottom comes right out. Now we're going to put in the Jordan distributor adapter. So we now have a regular four pin relay and then adapts to the same two plugs on the OEM harness. And then we can also install our kill switch. So for 70 bucks, you now have a simplified main relay, probably more reliable than this old unit. This is, I don't even know how old this is, could be original for the car, so 30 something years old. And then now we have the option to do the kill switch. And they even have this ghost lock thing, which allows you to remotely kill the car. 
Rock Auto just showed up. We got the front rotors in place. We just gotta wait for two new caliper bolts so we can fit the caliper bracket back on. The Will Woods use different bolts for their brackets, so we had to order some new metric 12 by 125 for the front, as well as the rear. This one's just mocked up for now, but you can see how good the painted calipers came out. It looks really nice. I am a big fan of just doing all black, and then these rotors are from Dynamic Friction. So they're like the coated ones, so they don't come with any oil or grease on them. And uh, whenever the pads apply pressure and break it in, then it'll start to expose the surface, but everything else is coated and will not rust. Also got some OEM Honda interior panels. These are for the bulkhead that covers the ECU and all the relays. The OEM ones were completely shot. These are the OEM ones that were in the car. You can just see how warped they are and all the clips are busted. And even if you put in new clips, the whatever you call this board, fiber board is all messed up anyway. Shout out to Amayama, however you guys pronounce it, um, for all the new OEM parts that we get for much cheaper than buying from Acura dealers here. Look how fresh that is. Like all brand new clips. It's straight, it's not bent or warped. Pushing these clips in for the first time is gonna be so satisfying. Moving on to the passenger side one, we just took it out of the box. It's got this nice little pocket back there for what it seems like some paperwork or a folder of some sort. So nice. I love new interior parts on old cars. And we have the back panel all together. For the first time I've ever had this car, everything fits perfectly, snaps right into place. When I got this car, this panel would not stay on. It kept falling off. These kept falling off too, like they were, clips were all broken. It is really nice to just make things better than how they came. I think we're also gonna order a new panel of this. This cover is missing. This one is super loose, so probably gonna order a new one of these. We're gonna probably have to put in a new CarPlay radio. That one's pretty dated. And I also wanna get a new cover. It's hard to see, but it's this cover that is for the keyhole. This like uh, fake leather thing that goes all the way around. The clips on that one are also broken, so it kind of like dangles. I have it zip tied just so it doesn't fall off for now. And then the finishing touch would be new seats. I want to get red Recaros or similar seats. And that's why I pulled the tints off because you want to be able to enjoy and look into the inside of the car and see how sick it is. And then I want to pull the tint off the inside of the engine hatch because uh, from the outside, you don't really see all the beauty that's going on in here. You kind of want people to know that it's turbocharged, especially when you put all this work into it. And then they'll look in here and go, whoa, intercooler, billet, alternator, nice fuel rails. Come on, you gotta show it off. Guys, it's super early, Sunday, five in the morning. But uh, today is March, what, second, third, Sunday. We are going to Hayfields by 8 o'clock. We are trying to get there as soon as possible. We still have some things to get done on the NSX. As you saw, we did the first startup yesterday. We still haven't put the car on the ground yet, so I don't know if the wheel fitment is going to be good to drive. There's also no gas in the tank, and the idle is kind of rich. It's uh, like a 10 AFR, a little bit more than 10. Hopefully it drives decently. If it's still driving really rich, then I, I can't take it to Hayfields today, unfortunately. But I want to do an oil change. I want to get the car on the ground and uh, put gas in the tank and take it around the block. Uh, we got to get this thing retuned ASAP, but I want to make sure that everything else is working. Alternator is doing well, no belt squeal. And uh, we also have the bed in the brakes because the calipers are new and the brake rotors and pads are also brand new. So we got a lot of things to do on this test drive and uh, cars and coffee is less than three hours. So we gotta get moving. 
Got the oil draining. Take the oil cap off, let it drain faster. Oh my god. That thing is on tight. Ugh. What the heck? And here we go. That nice green oil. It's like a dark green, so you know regular oil is supposed to be kind of like a light gold. Well, this is a green oil. Holy crap, guys. For the first time, this car has a working parking brake. That is so sick. She is alive, baby. I am so happy. It sounds so good, too. We got a working parking brake. Got the new heat exchanger, we've got some cool temps. The wheels are looking great. Check out this exhaust. I guess we're good to clark the for now. Let's see how it goes on a test drive, see how bad the rubbing is. I mean, the fitment is pretty wild right now. It's definitely gonna rub, I hope I don't destroy my head. RWB. We are driving, boys. And guess what? My speedometer works again. Yo, there's so many new things. I need alignment, though. This is crazy. But my speedometer was working. And it does rub in the front. That is sick. And it matches the uh, speed on the Haltech. Oh, now we just gotta figure out the tack. Cause the tack works, but it's like super low. You see that? My cruising uh, AFRs are really good. That's like normal. It's just my idle is off. So I just try not to idle it. Sounds so good. even though it takes two months. Don't gotta pay nobody. And now everything works. This is awesome. I need a more wide angle lens. This is annoying. So we got the car plugged in. We have to take a data log for Derek because the idle is extremely rich. But the car cruise is fine. So we're gonna take a data log of the car cold starring and warming up. And then we're gonna get another data log of the car driving. Now it's logging, go ahead and start it. All right, so you guys can see here, once the oxygen sensor warms up, it takes a few seconds. Oil temps at 56, coolant temps at 57, fuel pressure is good. There we go. You can see, guys, see the uh, Y band is super, super rich, right? Not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be like 14.7. 10.7 is like super rich. A lot of fuel. So hopefully it doesn't foul out my oxygen sensor because those are not cheap. But we're logging here. All the details you see up there are coming from the ECU. So, get the data log for like five minutes, I would imagine, and then I can send it to him.